Welcome back to Unwoken, the number one podcast in the world for young conservative media, and that's a fact. My facts, of course, are the only ones that matter anyway. Here with Bubba Guillory and Ben Conk of BNB Productions. Gentlemen, how you doing? Great, awesome. man. Great. Thanks for having us. We've been cutting up for the past 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I, I mentioned this to Ben, and I was like, man, this would be a great idea to just get our story across. Because, you know, a lot of times we get people asking us, you know, how you guys got started, what do you do? And this well, is well, a let's perfect start off. platform for that. Where y'all are from? Uh, I'm from New Iberia, actually, born in Lafayette, raised in New Iberia. As an ordained minister, I bless you, my child. Yeah, thank you. Not, <laughs> not the uh, crime-ridden New Iberia, uh, <laughs> as it is today, but... Um, yeah, New Iberia. Went to New Iberia Senior High. Graduated high school there. Nish. Yeah, Nish. Yellow Jackets. What about you, old Ben? I'm from Karen Crow. You know, God's country. God, oh. God shined his light upon the world and said, let there be a perfect place. And it was Karen Crow. I don't live there anymore. But if it was perfect, he'd still be living there. But that's it was, another it story. It was at that time. <laughs> yeah. At that time, yeah. That's a nice sign you got right there. I like that a lot. Oh, thanks, man. I, you know, um, you asked me where, we, where you got that from. Um, guy I used to work with in the car industry um I did his daughter's wedding he's like dude y'all need a sign you know whatever and he started making those and uh he made it for us and uh we ended up doing his son's wedding as well and uh the interesting part about having the B&B sign is that um we don't really use it for weddings just because we don't think it's a good idea to do it but like for parties you start getting text messages for requests it's like, you know, how do these people know our number and our number, my number is on the bottom. And uh, people started texting uh, requests. So it, it actually works out pretty cool. Wait, they text you request in the middle of while you're doing your service? So that's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's what's different about when we started, there was CDs. Now it's all on computers. So now they like text them, but hey, can you play this? Cause yeah, you know, and some of them walk up and say, hey, you have this song, you know, we don't like doing that. But, uh, you know, you can text a request. That's not a big deal. One of the uh, number one things that a buddy of mine, whenever we go out, because I bought into downtown at Grand Street, mm-hmm. whenever we go out, we stand on the stage because we didn't want to be on the dance floor with everybody, we like to chill back. Well, whenever somebody would come up to him that was on the stage with us and say, hey, dude, you should play this song. He goes, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he goes, he goes. that's like me telling you how to do your job. Yeah, right, it's like, right. hey, play this song, it's going to work. And we look at each other and it's like, that ain't going to work, man. I, you know. Well, and, and, you know, it's like sometimes there's, uh, hey, that's a good idea. But when the same person asks for eight songs, then it's like, nah, nah. Like, yeah, over and yeah. over. You play a song, it's coming back. Like, so. dude, your vibe is not the whole vibe of the place. Right, right. right Especially right. when it's a song that, like, nobody... It's not a dance song. It's not, like, we're here for a wedding. We're here to have fun. Right. So, do you have to adjust with the times now? Oh, with music? yes. Yeah. Because I'm not a big fan of today's music that much. Me no, either. it's different. And, uh, you know, let me just say this. Um, uh, a couple of buddies of mine, you know, Super Dave, a bunch of guys that are in our little pro mobile DJ group, we talk about... Because, you know, we won't be DJing in 15 years from now, you know. Well, how I you know, be. bro? Maybe Ben will. Maybe Ben will. I'll just push it all to Ben, and he'll do it. If he starts talking on the microphone, we'll maybe get that going. But <laughs> so um, it's like, what are you going to play in 15 years? You know, what kind of music are people going to dance to? You know, because we're, right now we're still playing all the favorite stuff from back in the day and just a couple of songs, you know, from today's music. So. It's interesting. But, man, we're, we're seeing more and more of the younger crowd dancing to the older music. The bunny hop. Dude, that song's <laughs> Dude, that forever going to be. That was from the 90s. Like, yeah, that's that's old. That song's actually yeah. old, pretty old, yeah. This is actually one of those one-hit wonders that you know are still making all things back. off that music. Like they, I think they're, they're starting to realize that like the, the difference between music you like to listen to and music you're going to dance to mm-hmm. are different. Yep. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of a lot of younger, like early twenties couples requesting things like that, Bunny Hop or like Whitney Houston or like just Earth Wind and Fire. Yeah, Earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. That. Like they yeah, love the old stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd y'all yeah. meet? Um, I'll let Ben tell you the story first, and we'll so, we'll just go from so there. So and I met in uh, two thousand one. Mm-hmm. Uh, working at a car dealership together, um, I was I was 21 years old, had a six month old kid. Looked like he was 10. And uh, not the kid, me. No, you. Yeah, yeah, you, you. And so, uh, so a couple months later, he was talking about DJing. I was 
he was like, man, if I could have somebody that could help me set this up. And I was like, I'll go set you up. So he paid me 50 bucks. And he was like, hey, you $50? I was like, shit, that, like, that's, that's diapers and all that, you know, for, for, for Canaan. So I was like, all right, let's go. And that was 22 about, years ago. Yeah, about 22 years ago. 22 yeah. years ago. Shit. And then yeah. uh, he still pays me $50 to set up. Yeah, I'll pay him more than that. <laughs> <laughs> $50 but to like, show up. Yeah, $50 yeah. to show yeah. up. 50. And some days I'm like, you know, I'll text yeah. Ben. Or, like during hey, the week. You still, like, you still come? Yeah, like what are we wearing, you know? And I'm like, you know, we're going to wear gray suits, you know, because we always wear suits, sometimes ties, you know, because it's a professional thing. Yeah. And we want to make sure that, you know, we look good and, and sound good too. And um, <laughs> so I'll text him, hey, uh, this week gray suits, no tie. Wednesday, nothing. Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, text them, still nothing, you know, and my wife's like, uh, is Ben going with you tonight? I said, well, he said he would, you know, but it's, we have a DJ calendar. And so then we, I show up, and then it's like, oh, here you, there yeah, he is. Yeah. I'm horrible with texting too, man. Yeah, bright eye, bush tail. Yeah. I, you know, just let me know you're okay, you're alive, and you might want to help me DJ that weekend. So it's worked out. <laughs> How long is the latest wedding you've ever done? Oh, like, like to end in the wedding? Oh no, no, just like the latest y'all have ever stayed out DJing recently. Oh man, we had that one that was like four in the morning in the uh, what was that? In Mamu, yeah, yeah we Mamu. We were doing, and we probably do this one this year, but we we do the fireman's ball in Mamu. Um, a bunch of great guys. Uh, and then you know, after they like y'all can have, y'all come have gumbo after. So it was like yeah, literally four in the morning. Yeah, we go to the fire from, station across the street come back from, from the Mamou. venue. Yeah, we go to we go eat. Uh, that's, gumbo that's with those guys tough. and we coming back home it's like 6 6 30 in the morning you know so it's an all day kind of thing playing uh, yeah you know two ish but you know today's but receptions to after party and it's like oh well yeah today's parties receptions don't last nearly as long not nearly as many people uh you know after covid you know people started getting together again and and um the crowds you know started getting you know so 150 200 is about the norm now what is the most difficult thing about djing in today's day and age um not too many things are difficult i i, I think that perception is you know we play a hundred songs for a wedding reception and that that's not you know that's not what it is a, a normal song is four minutes we play probably with all the announcements you know all the formal dances and all that stuff we you know some um announcements in between it you can only get about 60 songs so in our contract we send out uh what what do you want played you know your favorite songs and what you know must play songs and what you know you don't want played and we let them know there's about 60 and and, and today's brides really have a hard time trying to get all those songs in it's it's either they give us 100 songs or they give us 20. So we have to fill in the blanks. And we tell them, you know, we've done how many weddings? I'd, Probably, rather, I'd rather 20 and let me fill in the blanks. Yeah, right? and because and, we can kind of feel the crowd and know what's going on with it. And what we tell them is, you know, give me your 200, 250 people and let us entertain them. You know, you guys are getting married. It's your uh, gift to your family and friends. We'll go ahead and, you know, entertain them. Hand them to us. Have a good time. So I think that's what makes us different because there's two of us. A lot of my friends are doing it, you know, single-handedly. And the reason I think what sets us apart is that, you know, Ben can be back here pushing buttons. I'm on the dance floor, whether we're doing money pinning songs or an anniversary dance where everybody who's married gets, you know, on, on the dance floor together. Um, and just kind of getting everybody, you know, involved, interactive. We, we, we like to be more hands-on, whether you have step-parents or, you know, whatever's involved. We want everybody to feel like they're a part of it. So what's included in the B&B Productions package? Um, we have a few different packages. You know, the, the bare minimum uh, is four hours for just a basic wedding reception. We have a five-hour package for ceremony and reception. And, and lately, and I think Ben will vouch for this, is that... Uh, not a whole bunch of people are getting married in the church anymore. They're, they're doing like on-site uh, wedding reception 
you know, wedding ceremony and reception, uh, which makes it kind of nice because we're, you know, we're there, we can set it up, um, and we don't really have to move much. So we, yeah, so with it you get you get a, a pre ceremony meeting, usually about two weeks before. We'll meet with the bride and groom. Usually the bride, the groom's like by that time tapped out. <laughs> uh, right. But we'll sit there and, and we'll walk through your whole ceremony with you, and and the whole reception with you. Like, hey, what, when do you want to do this? When do you want to do that? It eliminates them needing a, a wedding coordinator. We become that. You know, right? Um, and and it it, it it gives them a peace of mind that they know that everything's fine. You know, because uh, that's nerve wracking to know that hey, if I'm I'm going in, you know, we want to do the first dance and the DJ is not where he's supposed to be, or he's waiting on us, and you know, so we 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 do that about two weeks before and and get all that situated. And we have it all ready to go, ready to go. And yeah, so to add what Ben's saying is that, yeah, we meet, we do a meet and greet. That's part of our package uh, for any wedding, whether it's a ceremony and reception or just a reception. Uh, we normally meet at Pizza Village here in Lafayette. A good friend of mine owns it. Um, when people see us walk in with some paperwork and a bride and groom that they've never seen before, um, we're doing a couple of things. We're bringing... Um, we're bringing Pizza Village a new customer who's never walked in the building, uh, which they like, and they treat them like, you know, king and a queen. But um, to add what Ben's saying, everything is basically mapped out. So when we get to a gig, whether it's out of town or in town, um, everything's mapped out. Uh, there's no guesswork. Um, I'll take I'll take the sheets of um, um, survey questions that we ask them, what you want, what you don't want you know, in some special interests, and I'll go home and make a folder. We get to a wedding reception, everything's done, ready to go. Uh, we have their songs, our songs. Uh, we get together with a photographer, a videographer, if they have one, the wedding coordinator, we form a team. Um, so everybody knows we're all, all on the same page. And when we get ready to do something, what we think needs photography, uh, videography, we'll let them know, hey, this is what's getting ready to happen. We feel like you should be ready. We're going to do it in two songs. Can you be ready? Sure. So uh, when something comes up and they think it's a good idea for pictures, they're ready to go. And, you know, that's, that's a really good part of it. So they get those good, you know, wedding reception pictures, friends and family. We do something called the um, anniversary dance where we invite everyone who's married on the dance floor, eliminate you by time being married. I'm on the dance floor with everybody we do one three five seven ten you know we eliminate you by time being married and i've actually heard ben say a few words uh a couple of times a couple of times <laughs> but he gets all the credit because all this music is great he's young you know and at the end of the night you thanks, know when bro. all the girls thanks. when thanks, all the bro. girls want you know young thing. yeah nice. so when the girls was, want all the of... booty type music which we do pretty much at the end the you know last hour and a half um, he's pushing all the buttons, so it makes him look good. So, what made you get into your fascination of music, both of y'all? Who was it? Who was the one band that got you whenever you were younger that said, "Well, his is easy. His dad." Yeah, my dad. Mine's my, also easy. It's my dad, just less mm -hmm. in a in a different. Yeah, his dad and my dad both play music, which you know is pretty interesting. But my dad was a radio DJ. Um, and when I was 15 years old, Dad was in radio, and he'd bring back um, these boxes of 45s. For for those of you who don't know what a 45 is, it's a vinyl it's about a that big. It's the small yeah. records, the small ones. The small one, not the album. <laughs> not, not the like CD player ones. No, 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 a little bigger than that. A little bigger than CD, but not the big album. I'm about to say, man, I still got my Walkman, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, they don't make a Walkman for 30, for 45. So. Right. So Dad, Dad would uh, basically bring these records home. Um, the record label companies would send the radio station these boxes of about 100 records. And um, my dad and the rest of the guys at the station would listen to uh, songs, and they were like, this is good, let's keep this one, we're going to play that. You know, and then you have the, you know, the record companies calling and begging you to play their songs. But uh, like the old Beatles songs with the, you know, with the Apple label, I wish I still had those. We played Frisbee with those. My brother and I did when we were kids. Uh, worth probably a bunch of money. But anyway, and threw them all yeah, we, we frisbee those. Um, 
But anyway, long story short, I met a guy named Brent Spragans. Uh, hence the B and B productions. The B, yeah, he's the second B. Uh, yeah, I'm B two. But Brent Spragans uh, was a real good friend of mine in high school. Played in a garage band, and uh, we got to be friends through the Optimus Club, I think. And he, um, I told him, I said, you know, I like to go listen to you guys, and they were good. You know, you know, I, I thought they were good, and I always wanted to be in a band. Didn't really play an You're instrument. In the Optimus Club. Junior Optimus, yeah. Yeah, bro, I was in that too when I Were was you? Yeah, yeah, I was state vice president. No shit. Yeah, a great group of people. So I told him, I said, look, I said, my dad's a radio. Yeah, two of us. So my dad <laughs> was a radio DJ. And um, I told him, I said, look, I said, I can get records from my dad. I'll buy two turntables and a mixer. We'll plug it into your, your, your system, your, you know, your garage band system, and we can make a little money. So we did that, and uh, Brent Spragans, like I said, was his name, and um, his dad made us some lights, uh, some paint cans. I'll never forget, there were paint cans, and they had like the different color gels mm -hmm. on the front, and he made these real heavy poles with a heavy base uh, to you know, screw it in and plug it into, and uh, he made a board, a light board. Our first light board was some light switches. So one of us was playing <laughs> the songs, the records, and the other guy was playing with the lights. So anyway, so that's where B&B &B Productions came from. I ended up meeting Ben. Like I said, long story short, he's been with me 22 years. and Just by uh, default, evidently. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so it, just, it happens to be B&B. &B, thanks, Mom. You know, it's always been B&B, &B, so I guess it'll end up being B&B. &B, so. Yeah, yeah, it just happened to work out. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, like, I, grew, up, I grew up with music. My, uh, my dad was a musician. He... But so it's funny because dad, dad was a uh, Motown slash folk guy. He was a big James Taylor, Joe, Jim Croce, Marvin Gaye, that kind of deal. And then, Timmy and then my mom was what my dad called space music, Beatles, CCR, you know, because, you know, this is back in the late 60s, early 70s. Mom, my, my mom is like the least hippiest hippie person ever. Like, <laughs> She loved hippie music, but she was not that at all, you know. And uh, but uh, so I so I grew up with music. I did, like a bunch of friends of mine are musicians, both professionally and and amateurly. Uh, and then so I've always loved music. Like that's I'd rather I'd rather sit there and watch a live band than a movie. You know what I mean? Or a friend of mine playing in the garage than. Right. Then watching TV, you know that that's how music music's always just kind of spoken to me. Um, and then, like Bob said one day, he was like, "Hey, I told my dad I I can make more money playing other people's music than you'll yeah. ever play. You know, than I can do playing my own. Yeah, like I'm 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 the I'm the world's okayest guitar player. <laughs> like right. But I know that I'll never make music make money doing that. Uh, but I also like it's awesome to watch when you get the right song at the right time and man everybody just gets excited you know like jump, jumps off out of their seat and then, yeah uh, like yeah, man yeah. it's 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 it, 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 it's 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 surreal sometimes when like especially when the bride and groom like they might be talking to grandma and grandpa and you play the right song and then all of a sudden they're on the dance floor like yes Is it, it has to be bunny hop no, it, <laughs> Not it, really. might, it might be Sweet Caroline. It might be it, like you never know what it is, but yeah. that's why we, that's why we meet with them before, so we kind of get an idea of what they like yeah. and what they want, you know. And so we can watch them when 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 the mingling gets a little too long, and they get like they're tired of it. We'll throw on a song that we know that it's on their list. Hey, mm -hmm. this is what they want. They'll, it might be Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody. It might be it might be bunny hop. It might be Cupid Shuffle. It might be you never know what it is, but it's something that draws everybody back to the dance floor. You know what I mean? Right. And that's what music does. Like music just brings everybody to a certain spot. You know, I found that song I was asking you about uh, a few months ago. There's no parking on the dance floor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got an interesting but... story about that. That was Midnight Star and um growing up, you know, I once 
you know, I had a little exposure to turntables and a mixer. I, I was two um, turntables and a microphone. Yeah, two turntables and a microphone. <laughs> I was uh, a nightclub DJ at 15 years old in New Iberia, a place called Rock's Place. Um, these guys snuck me in there, and um, I was making like 75 bucks a night, man. I was like a 15-year-old balling. Balling. I mean, I had money, you know. Uh, my mom Fast and dad. For 30 years, he was paying me 50. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Um, Ended up leaving there, and, the, and the club deal, across the street uh, reeled me in. Uh, Randy Gospa, he he sings with uh, and plays drums with a band called The Cast. He's one of my dear friends, you know, best friends still today. And uh, he gave me like a hundred bucks, you know. But he called me one day, you know, it was like on a payphone probably back then. He said, "Hey man," he says, "We got Midnight Star coming to the club." You know, it's like uh, he called me Monday. He said um, they're gonna play Wednesday night. And this is like no parking on the dance floor, freakazoid, you know, the whole nine yards. I mean, they were like on top of the world then, and nobody believed that we would have them. So anyway, we ended up having them like on a Wednesday, uh, packed the club. Uh, we barbecued either. We barbecued a ball of crawfish for them, for the whole band. The band consisted of like 10 Ten. Barbecue wasn't. I mean, the crawfish wasn't ten dollars a pound, buddy. No, it wasn't. At, at but we time. we would barbecue <laughs> or, or you would do something with bands um, back then. But we had Midnight Star. We had the Deal. Um, they sang Body Talk back then. It was a big song. Uh, Roger and Zach was there. Real nice guy. Pretty much all those guys, those funk bands from the you know the eighties. Um, if it was ten people in a band, Scott, each person could play like two or three different instruments they were all like musical geniuses it was amazing to see that's why the greatest song of all time is the sugar hill gang rapper's delight rapper's it was, delight. Delight. It was yeah. actually the first that's, song that's the first hip-hop ever. the first rap song actually yeah, that's people oh that time. was that was considered rap instead of yeah hip -hop. Yeah, yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say time, man they don't realize how much of our music we get today hmm. from that one song oh, yeah and, and i want to yeah. say it was 14 minutes and 31 seconds long i might be that i might be wrong song. but i'm pretty i'm yeah, pretty that's close that's <laughs> my dad wasn't a big big country guy right but i'm a big i, I love country music right merle haggard's by all time all time favorite and so my dad always told me, he's like, I, I, I heard Merle Haggard sing, I, I think I'll just stay here and drink the first time he ever played it. It was at Harry Smith's Lodge in mm -hmm. New Iberia, Louisiana. Cade, and, yeah. Well, Cade. Yeah. Yeah, it's close enough. But, <laughs> Same yeah, thing. <laughs> but yeah, he said he, said, uh, he wrote it on the bus, because at that time, I-10 was just, I mean, they were on a bus from I-10 from New Orleans to Houston, and they would stop off at just like Grand Street. Grand Street was a big stop off. And then they would go, he said, so they go to watch Merle Haggard and he says, I wrote this song, tell me what y'all think about it. And he starts singing, I think I'll just hear it. Of course, everybody loved it. He, Daddy said, next thing you know, this guy starts stumbling up on stage, walking like this, gets up on stage, nobody stops him, gets up on stage, sits there, Grabs a guitar and sits down, and Merle says, "Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Johnny Paycheck." And Johnny Paycheck was on his way to Houston, stopped by just to say hi, drunk off his ass. And <laughs> I don't know if I can say ass, but <laughs> yeah, we're past ten minutes. You can curse as much as you want. Okay, <laughs> the algorithm's ten minutes. But he was, he was like, he was like drunk off his ass. He was like, and nailed, take this job and shove it. And then got up and left, and that. But that's how that's how the old that's how it was yeah. back then. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't like airplanes and stadiums and all this stuff. It was, I mean, you had you had Ray Charles playing at Grand Street. Yeah, yeah. you had. Yeah. I mean, I I saw three eleven. I saw, like, like Grand Street alone is amazing. The amount of people that have played there, like yeah, right. Steve Ray Vaughan. Yeah, like all these guys have played there. They, right. had, they still have all the posters. They yeah. still have all the posters. They up don't in have. There. They don't have the wall no more. Though. But uh, <laughs> that was that was part of it. the first concert I ever went to. Besides, my mom has good friends with one of James Taylor's backup singers, so they get all the backstage. But she took me to see Motley Crue when I was twelve years old. Oh wow! And let me tell you something. There's certain things you should not witness on the jumbotron with your mom at twelve years old. That Motley Crue. Play. Correct. That's right. right <laughs> and Tommy right, Lee's right. in a revolving drum set. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> and I'm gonna take that part out. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sitting there just staring at the screen. Yeah, right, right. Uh, what is your favorite genre of music? Um, 
man, I, I like singer songwriters type stuff. Uh, you know, Jim Croce stuff. Um, that's a hard. Neil that's a Young. hard question, man, because it, it depends on it depends on the the atmosphere. The like, well, Ben, we ask the hard questions here. I know. Yeah, but and, I'm and, just saying, like, this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer. I'm gonna go ahead and answer. Singer songwriter type stuff. Um, but I I was pretty much raised on. Um, late 70s early funk you know you know rick james cameo those guys midnight store cool. yeah yeah and you know and when people say you know you hear sometimes on the radio when these guys talk about on fridays they talk about new iberia music i feel like i was the person who put that music on the map live from reds yeah red saloon in new iberia and uh, along with randy gospel but uh, we we put that stuff together we had the deal. We had Midnight Star. We had Roger and Zap and some other bands. I can't remember, but um, I like that music. Not crazy about dancing. I'm not a big dance guy, but I, I like to hear it. Oh, dude, hey, at the KA house, which y'all just did a, an event for KA. Yeah, they were yeah. awesome. Yeah. They were awesome. Every time, dude, every they were time so a big good. party comes out, man. I, I was living at that house. Put on nothing but Earth, Wind, and Fire radio, cause oh, they were yeah. good. They, oh, yeah. loved, they loved yeah, it, man. Because you can't. Yeah. You, there's no way you can have a bad vibe. With they were good. Punk they, they loved it. They loved and the it. KA people were awesome, by the way. Uh, yeah, thanks for referring us. If you ask me, yeah, they, no, they were awesome. They all had the same haircut, same jacket on, same pants, <laughs> and almost the same girl, shoes. Same, yeah. And all the girls were hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I'm the only one who had the long, long hair. Whenever they, I had there was there was one guy with a cowboy hat. They were asking about you. They were asking about you. I said, I think he went to a wedding. They're like, what? A wedding? I said, not his. Not his. Not his. Sweetheart, this is why I love you. I went to a wedding over that. <laughs> yeah, credit. Maybe we'll do your wedding one day. Maybe. Hey, you know? bro. Hey, you'd be the first person to call. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Give me some time to keep rolling like we're rolling right now. And we're going to get it. <laughs> right, right, right. It's coming in the future. So anyway, I wanted to mention this too. My dad was a boogie king. Um uh, Fabulous Boogie King back in the late original 50s. Yeah, he was an original. Yeah, yeah, he was he the was bass the player. Founder. Yeah, this, he was one of the founding what a Boogie guys. King is for. Uh, it was back then. Was a blue eyed soul. Uh, they band. covered they it's covered a, a lot of Motown band. stuff. Yeah, it was a band. It was you a really band. didn't know what it is. No, no, seriously, it was a band. Um, but they covered a lot of, you know, Marvin Gaye, uh, the Temptations, Four Tops. Um, they did a lot of that live, and and you know all these. Nightclubs, you know, Southern Louisiana. But they did it with, a, but they do with a Southern vibe, with a, with horns and mm -hmm. with yeah, like some Lou Bega kind of, some Lou Bega. Yeah, 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 pretty much. And so Dad was the original bass player uh, of the band. Um, Dad passed away six years, five years ago, six years ago. Uh, played with Warren Storm, whose birthday was yesterday. Uh, who's the godfather of Swamp Pop and Rod Bernard? So uh, it was Rod Bernard, yeah, and Gigi Shin, and you know. Dwayne Yates and all those guys, but uh, they were really popular back in the day. So I, I, I like when you ask what kind of music genre I like. I pretty much like everything. But if you ask my wife if we're listening to a song, I'll play about 10, 15, 20 seconds of it and switch it because yeah. I want to hear more of it, more of them. Uh, but um, so yeah, so I'm a, I'm a Boogie King brat. Uh, grew up, you know, Dad was a radio DJ like we talked about. I uh, remember dropping him off at the Southern Club in, in Lawtel uh, in the back. Dad played bass. And um, the legend has it that Dad played the first electric bass guitar, not the stand-up um, French bass. This one can actually plug in. So one night on the patio drinking a beer with Dad, uh, we talked about, you know, how'd you get in the Boogie Kings, you know, because they, they were very popular back then. They toured everywhere. And... Um, he said, son, he said, his dad, my grandfather, who I never met, he had passed away before I was born, bought it for him on AM radio from um, uh, a Little Rock AM radio station. People used to listen to it at night. It came in really clear. And uh, so he said, knocked on the door. He said, hey, Ned, uh, I have something I think I can bring to the band. And they're like, what do you have, Skip? My dad's name was Skip Stewart. And he said... Um, I have a bass guitar we can plug in, like a, like a guitar in an amp. He said, if you have that, go get it in the station wagon, plug it in, you're in the band. So the rest is history. 
they made a bunch of songs together, you know, a lot of re-recorded stuff, but it was, I still have most of that. So let me ask you this. I'm going to go around right here. If you were a UFC or boxer, UFC fighter or boxer, what would be the song that you walked out to? Me? Crazy Train. By Ozzy? Oh, yeah. No doubt. Bubba? Um, I would probably do Carry On, Wayward Son, Kansas, maybe. Uh-huh. I love classic rock. See, I go ain't so no mountain. A, I go ain't no mountain high enough so I could be to keep me from getting to you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta remember. I mean, you know me. You've known me for years, and like I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fighter. So if I'm gonna get fighter, if I'm gonna get to where I'm gonna fight somebody, we're going crazy train. We, I, I have to get some kind of like psycho thing. Or you do like Tyson and just have the chains. And then the bite people, around. like bite people's ear off and stuff. Yeah, you could. You could. <laughs> what, what's the age difference between y'all two? 87 years. <laughs> well, no. he, um, when we get somewhere, people think he's my son or my grandson. Well, he, you don't look. Yeah, probably yeah. more grandson. He it called, used to be great, but now. Now I've he's called bigger called and called fatter. Up. He's I've big and up. fat now, so he looks yeah, older. Yeah, I've caught up. I got fat what, and you gray. What, 55? No, I'm 60. But I'm 60, oh. I'm 43. Yeah, I'm 60. Look damn good so, for 60. He said, man, you're old yeah. enough to be my dad. I said, yeah, why yeah, do you keep telling so, people that? Yeah, so Bub graduated in 81, graduated high school in 81. I was born in 80. So he technically could be my dad, but that's the age difference. Depending on what that time was. So, yeah, 17 years is the difference. Oh, bro, Bub, you, you're young, son. Like, yeah, I feel young at heart. You know, some days I, I wake yeah, up yeah. like my knee hurts for no particular reason. It's like I'm 29. I got arthritis, but it's all right. <laughs> okay, good. It makes me feel better. Well, it's because all them scrums. Yeah. What's your favorite part about what y'all do? Uh, just making people have a good time. You know, and and I think the reason we're still together, and you know, and and I think about you know the old days when they had these bands that were you know eight, nine, ten pieces or whatever. It's hard sometimes to get just two of us together. But when we go out of town, we don't know anyone. You know, we we hang out with each other, and you know, and um, what's crazy is that we've been doing it so long, we think alike. You know, if I walk up to Ben and say, "Hey, I think this song's gonna work," oh, I'll so look, and times. the song's already yeah. So many I mean, times. yeah, it's like, like retarded, crazy. Like, hey, How many you times? should do this, and I'm like, oh, it's already there. yeah. We it's have already. it ready to go. You know, so we we've been doing it enough to know that. Um, we make people have a good time. We we spend a lot of our time at the end of the night shaking hands with people and saying, hey, man, thanks for wearing a suit. You know, the dad might come by and say, hey, thanks, you guys, for wearing a suit. Uh, shows a lot of respect for my daughter, you know, stuff like that. Because you have to sound good, but you got to look good, too. I, I think we present a really good product, um, and it's a lot of fun. And like we talked about earlier, it's all mapped out. There's no guesswork. Um we can ad lib if we want to. Um, we just make it fun, and people come around and say, "Hey, thank you. We had a great time. Great time, you know." And we're trying to pack up and go, you know. So it's a compliment to us, I think. Man, I think I think I think the best the best part of what we do is when bride and groom, right before they do the exit walk, come up and say thank you, like a, a sincere thank you, like because that that means that hey, we made we made their night good like right before they leave if they do it before it doesn't matter right but at the end of the night after all the stress i mean because it's stressful man like they they have to do pictures for five hours they have to they have to go tell everybody <laughs> hi they have to go, you know but when they come right before they leave and they say thank you all so much that's 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 the best part you know what's pretty cool too scott is that um we become friends with a lot of these people. Some people we already know. Most people we don't. Man, but, there's one group of friends that we've done, what, eight of their weddings? Like a group yeah. of friends. Not family. All groups of friends. We've done eight of them. Yeah. Eight different wedding receptions. We've got pictures uh, with those people. But what's pretty cool is that uh, a lot of times once they get married and they start having children, they start texting pictures of us with their children. And, you know, just so, because that's what kind of relationship we build with those people, you know. Have y'all done the Woodlawn Chapel? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're we're actually uh, preferred vendors there uh, with with Leglise. Yeah. yeah, with Leglise. I'm trying to think if y'all did a wedding that I officiated over there. Maybe so. So we're um, 
we're uh, preferred my vendors. Married there. <laughs> His ex. My ex in law. Ex in law. Ex-in-law. Oh yeah, my husband. Ex. Oh, so your husband in law. Okay. You're talking about your, your husband in law. Yeah. My, my ex in law. I guess that's legal. My wife. Right? My wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife's ex husband got married there. But no, we're. Uh, I should get invited. So yeah, did you get invited to that? We were there. Yeah. Oh okay, good. You're a good dude. So anyway, um, we're preferred vendors at a bunch of different places. Um, I didn't say we got invited. I said I was there. Oh, I'm you said you showed up. Okay. No, I was there. We, I was invited. Uh. So anyway, so we're preferred vendors. Uh, we work really well, um, kind of hand in hand with uh, Bonton Grill. Angie and the group over there, they're really good. Yeah, they're they, awesome. They, they do great work. That's Angie and all them. Yeah, yeah they have Bonton Grill, uh, L'Eglise. Uh, we're also happy to say, not a lot of people know this, but we're the preferred DJs for um, Sunny Mead Catering Facility in Scott. They asked us... Um, her husband Shane stepping down because he was doing some of the DJing and uh, we played there a bunch of times and, and Lainey asked us uh, would we consider doing uh, their wedding gigs and they do like 40 something a, a year so uh, if you're looking for a, a DJ when you when you call Sunny Me, they're gonna refer us and of course we'll do a meet and greet if you like the way it fits uh, we'd be happy to do it but um, yeah man we, we like getting preferred by all these vendors makes us feel good uh sometimes we'll play a place one time and all of a sudden we're on their list so we know we're doing a good job we think so yeah yeah, what's your schedule like coming up this year um it's a little light right now um we have some stuff coming up uh and during the summer months uh they're on a whole bunch of weddings just because it's hot but uh how do people go about booking y'all uh so we basically do word of mouth scott is all we do because we don't want to do too many weddings, because uh, we like to get a you know get a wedding and focus on getting that wedding done and and making sure it's right. And um, but I'm on Facebook, Bubba Guillory, uh, Ben Conks on there. Um, pretty easy to get in touch with. You you, you can you know message yeah, us. Yeah, we'll, we'll tag them in the link down below. We'll put a link for their Facebooks underneath this video. So just click that down arrow right below to scroll down and to see old Benjamin Conk and Mr. Bubba Gillery. It's not Benjamin. I mean, it, it is Benjamin, but, you know, I don't I don't go by Benjamin because then that's too professional. <laughs> I love you, bro. He doesn't talk on the mic. Yeah. Hey, have you all noticed that the mic went from here to here? Okay, so I got this. So Ben, ben is actually... Bubba loves the microphone. No, listen, loves. and Ben hates it. So one of us have to do it, right? One of us have to do it has to do it so ben is actually going to attempt to do a wedding by himself not attempt i have to yeah because i won't be there when is this uh march night yeah you heard that panda yeah i'm going to a car show that weekend i you know also it's not the first one i've done by myself by the way it's probably the second probably the second maybe maybe the third but anyway, part of me wants to, you know, have a rain out at the car show so I can go help him <laughs> just because I feel like I need to be there. But oh I think God. he can do it. I think he can do it. This dude right here. I mean, we've been together 22 years. It is time. It's time. All right. So I'm going to ask a question. Ask yeah, a go question. ahead. To both of you. So you, you've been to weddings. You've been to weddings. What is the most touching part of a reception? Like emotionally, like, man, that was awesome. Mm. From from a non DJ and a DJ, wow, I don't know, like don't know. Uh, like consistently, like every time you go to a wedding, like man, that's awesome. Probably the mother and son dance, mother and son. Okay, I'm gonna say father daughter, same thing. I was gonna do father and daughter only because I have a daughter and yeah, he has I, a daughter, and you have yeah mother daughter. Like that's that's the that's the part. Like I've cried so many times sitting there. Watching the father daughter dance, right? Because I have a daughter, and it's gonna happen, and I'm I'm gonna cry, right? But so like the mother son thing, I cried every time. So I've been married twice, right? Three times actually. But I DJ like, two of them. The the parents and the when when that interaction that that transfer of like the parent being like man. You're married now. 
Like that, that's, that's kind of the handoff thing. thing. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, so I've always wondered, you know, the the really cool part, you know, of the. It can be the first dance. It can be the father daughter. It can be, you know, the guy and his mother. It's like, what are they talking about? Right. You right. know, it's like I want to know, you know, because sometimes, um, the you know, because we don't dance with our mom like that all the time. You know, it's like, what do they talk about? But, but like Ben saying, it's not the transfer of power. It's like you know, here's my daughter, it's take like, care of her. It's, it's just you like know, it's your, just your little baby's growing up. And you know, that's the most important part of the whole reception. And you know, I tell Ben that's what makes me the most nervous is because it has to be right. You know, it has to be all the songs are picked out. But it has to be the right moment, and there could be no mess up in there, you know. So, so you say you say mother son. So that that or whenever like say it's uh if you're go- I'm going to a wedding for a friend of mine who's a girl, the moment they see you, whenever you do go give them that dance, yeah. that yeah. dollar dance, and you tip yeah. them, and they they hug on yeah. to you. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, you, man. That's that friendship. On. That's that friendship. Yeah, man. that's yeah, that's yeah. Big. a personal moment. No, well, it's because, big. It's well, big. because especially for you, because I've been again, I've known you for a while. Like, I know that you you hold your friends close. Yeah, like yeah, you're well. like that. That's so like that's an that's an important part for you as a friend to be like, hey, you're not my friend no more. You're his wife. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you have to let you now. Like now, I'm. It's not my job to protect you. It's his. Like so yep. for you, that's. That's that's interesting to 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 see. You know, Scott. That, you I know think I, mean? I think what's yeah. amazing. The only boy too. So right, right. Yeah. I sisters. mean, and you got sisters, and like, yeah. so that's that's gonna happen. Like, mm-hmm. hey, sisters are gonna get married, and you know what? You you're still big brother, but you're not brother. Like now, now that's not that's not your sister. That's that man's wife. Now I don't and, have to threaten to kill and, you anymore. So but, now you got to threaten to kill other people. But <laughs> but you but you also have to let go of those reins in that like hey it's this is not your like it's still your baby sister but hey that's that's uh, that's somebody's wife. I think what's and amazing, that trumps, you know. I think what's yeah. amazing, Scott, close, close is close. how much Ben it, is no, talking it, tonight. That's how it is. I think it's amazing how much Ben is actually talking tonight on the microphone. I, I think well, that's I'm not, fantastic. The microphone's over there because you keep moving it over there. I know because you, you're talking a lot, so I'm gonna just get my little <laughs> share in there. Since we've been doing it such a long time, instead of playing, I mean, for those that don't know what money pinning songs are, it's a Cajun tradition. Uh, your chance to dance with the bride and groom. You walk up, pin money on them. Somebody else cuts in. So I figured out a long time ago, instead of us playing a bunch of songs and doing all that i just made a mix to where there's no guesswork for the bride um those songs are already pre-recorded they're about a minute long um and we'll say you know this is your chance to dance with the bride and groom when you hear the song change feel free to let somebody else cut in so we're not it's like i tell them we're not talking about what we're doing for thanksgiving what we're doing for christmas we're here to pick up money for you guys and on to the next. So that works out really good too. It makes that's for some smart, really that's good. smart as hell. Yeah, it makes for some really good pictures. I never really thought about that. When does the bride know to actually, or groom know the shift? Yeah. Well, right. yeah, so, so yeah, when, so when yeah, and, yeah, and I'll tell like them, when you hear the song, in, yeah, cool. when you hear the song change, man, let somebody else cut in, pin money on you. And we'll let that, that mix is about 22 minutes long. Cause We've only used them, it one time for 22 minutes, and and the bride would be like, you know, in the meet and greet. That's a long. Time. That's a long time. But guess what? If they're pinning money on you, <laughs> we'll let them continue to do if, it. If it'll go 44 minutes, let's go. Yeah. So you know, we're picking I'm up money. Spin that shit. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So we do that. That's kind of different. But if not, what happens is if you play one song, like at a time. Then you have one person wanting to dance for right, and they don't minutes. know. Yeah, they don't know when to. To leave, it? yeah, because there's a so then now you two hours in and you had like right four dollars, yeah, so yeah, so that's how it is. So, through all your years of marriage, I'm asking you this mm-hmm. all your years of marriage, what is the most important aspect to keeping it going? Mine, mm-hmm. oh, it's, it's 100% communication for sure. Oh, yeah, no doubt. 100, you agree? And, and communication, and I will say, I will say on marriage number three. Always keep dating. Yeah, don't get complacent. Complacent. Yeah, and, 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 Date, and, like, 
and continue that, to do that, stuff. That, you dinner, know, that, that dinner, that dinner, that dinner, that little I dinner out means so, that's so much. Unexpected mm-hmm. helps too. You know what I'm saying? When, you know, they get home like, oh, this is done. You know, and just doing things that are unexpected. But you know, Valentine okay. cards, flowers. I've been giving my wife flowers. We've been it'll be 24 years. We're married. I give her fresh flowers every two weeks. Mm-hmm. I go to Albertson and just buy a little bundle of flowers, put it in there. Yeah, and see, I'm not a, I'm not a flowers guy, but like we we make sure that once she's every, not either. Once she's every, not a big once flower a, person, Once every couple but, weeks, we do we cook together. Yeah, because that's a date. Like that's that's something you do when you're dating. That's not something a lot of people do when they're married for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. but they should, right? I and think, so I think a lot of times like it's just how you brought up hang out you it, hang know. out together oh, yeah, hang out together Scott 100% like, what, don't, the way, don't what you saw don't spend up. don't spend your time in this room while she's in this room or her in the kitchen and you over here or you outside and she's in like spend some time together date 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 well ladies and gentlemen as always thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Unwoken podcast Thank you to Mr. Bubba Guillory and Ben Conk for coming and join the show. Underneath this video is going to be the link to both their profiles. So if you want to get your wedding booked or any of your special events booked with BNB Productions, make sure to click the link below and we'll get that set up. Thank you, and we'll see you asses next week. Thanks, guys. You sit down.